Welcome back. It's Dr. Van Dyke here with part five of five in diabetes education. This time we're talking about overall health. So let's get started. All right. Now we um, touched on this idea in part four about how diabetes and depression can go together. Uh, it's important that everybody knows because it's kind of an American trend that we, we do not equate problems of the body with problems of the mind. But depression is a medical condition, all right? And it's very common in people with diabetes. It happens to be more common among women than men, but men may be suffering more. They're, they're far less likely to seek any kind of assistance or treatment. And so I need to underscore to everyone that um, if you feel poorly with when you're managing your diabetes, and again, it's so common because diabetes doesn't go away. You know, it's, it's just relentless. It's always there and it can be exhausting to deal with it. It is absolutely not a sign of weakness or any measure of failure to seek help. And, and I, I check with my patients to see how they're doing. And, and I always tell them, please tell me if you are noticing this, let's get you the resources that you deserve. What are those symptoms that they're feeling? That's the concept of feeling down, sad or blue, so to speak. Um, more common, people lose interest in their usual activities. They may have changes in their weight, and that can be up or down unintentionally. They can have changes to their sleep patterns, either sleeping too much or having insomnia. Depends on the individual. And, and some patients will say, oh, I feel anxious all the time. I'm nervous and I don't feel good. Um, or they may feel sluggish and just kind of slow and, and not quick to process anything. Sometimes that can be very physically obvious. They actually will move very slowly. Um, the classic ones would be crying spells or having um, more emotional experiences or, or inability to control emotional responses, feeling very tired, having no energy, difficulty focusing or making decisions is, is an unappreciated uh, symptom of depression. And then of course, classically, if anybody is thinking about death or suicide, or if they develop a plan, we want to know, we want to help you. How does it affect your diabetes if you have depression? Usually it's very difficult for patients to care for themselves and their diabetes if, if they're kind of sidelined by depression because you stop taking an interest in checking blood sugar, you stop making healthy decisions with lifestyle management and diet. And, and so blood sugar levels can just kind of run unchecked for some time. And then that increases risk in the long term of problems. So how can you cope with it? What can you do? Get support from family and friends, first of all. Talk to someone about what's going on, whether that's your doctor or your BFF or your parent or your spouse. It's, it's helpful to spend time with your support network, whether that's family or friends or either, it doesn't matter. Wherever you feel support, that's where you should spend time. And, and being physically active, I would say exercise is probably the single most underutilized antidepressant and is highly effective. So if, if you're able to go take your walk every day after your largest meal, you don't feel that great, please don't stop because the walk is helping. What can we do as the doctors and the healthcare team? We can change medications, we can add medications, uh, sometimes there are medications you're on that can make depression worse, and we want to try and get rid of those components and uh, find alternatives. We may add a medication specifically for depression. Depends on the patient, but always we are sources for support groups, and counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever your particular need is, as well as finding assistance with home health services. 
Other signs of stress, eating too much or having a poor appetite, not feeling like eating ever, drinking too much alcohol, sleeping all the time, not sleeping at all, difficulty remembering things, difficulty making decisions, losing your temper, worrying all the time about things that maybe you didn't worry about before or losing temper about things that used to not bother you um, or not feeling like you wanna do anything ever, just kind of a general apathy. What can you do for yourself? You are able to control what you eat, when you eat, how much of it you eat. You can control your physical activity. You, of course, should take your medications as prescribed and not miss any doses. And you can keep track of your blood sugars as well as any food journal that you might have so that when you do come see us, we have a complete picture of what is going on. What are the things that we should be doing? We talked before, always check the blood pressure. We check weight, we examine your feet, answer your questions, listen to concerns. And if you smoke, we always wanna find ways to help you stop, to support you in that because it's so damaging and your life can be so much better if you're able to quit. At least twice a year, but usually every three months at this point in time, we're checking that hemoglobin A1C. We always are gonna check uh, cholesterol at least once a year. Sometimes this happens um, every three months. It depends on what's going on with medications. We check your urine for protein and checking the kidney function with the GFR. And then always wanting to offer the flu immunization every season. Travel, so this is important. If you are flying, always check the airline's guidelines for traveling. Pretty much every airline is gonna offer or allow for you to bring diabetes supplies. They will have to be declared and separated from other things so they can be screened. If you have an insulin pump or a glucose sensor, you're probably gonna have to choose to have the pat down screening because uh, those devices will clearly set off the scanners and actually it can negatively affect the CGMs to go through the scanners. Your physician should be happy to provide a medical letter and uh, you always wanna make sure that you got enough meds and supplies for your trip. Always have a plan in mind for a backup in case you run out of supplies or you lose them or they get stolen. And as we previously discussed, you wanna have a medical alert bracelet of some kind so that if you are found unconscious, the paramedics will know that you have diabetes. So um, this uh, is a list of my resources. I've referenced some of this already that uh, if you want handouts, they can be downloaded at my website, lindsayvandyke.com under the link educational materials. You can always um, like our pages on Facebook and Instagram. And everything that we discuss in the podcasts and in these downloads, or big pardon, in these handouts, they're also on our YouTube channel where there is closed captioning. So again, you can find any episode of the podcast and all of these educational handouts pretty much anywhere where you get any podcasts. Um, and then there's always the YouTube channel as well. So I hope that this uh, session has been useful to you and it's always here for you to refer back to if you need it. And I wish you good luck in managing your diabetes and taking an early intervention and an aggressive approach. Be well.